promised to be the most fiercely contested season in Australian Rally Championship history. Two-time Asia-Pacific champion Possum Ball, back on Australian soil for the first time since 1993 in a very fast Subaru Impreza WRX racing machine. Canberra's Neil Bates, striving for a record four straight Australian Championship titles, with longtime co-driver Coral Taylor, in the Toyota Celica GT4, and Ed Audinsky, stepping up to Group A in a Mitsubishi Lancer. Add to that an exciting bunch of new talent in Group N, Pace noted events throughout for the first time. Some of the most challenging rally terrain in the world, and you had all the ingredients for a superb 1996 championship. It all started in March at the three day International Rally of Melbourne. Your commentator, Will Hagen. So, from the city square in the middle of Melbourne, the Minister for Sport, Tom Reynolds, flagging away the first seated car in Rally of Melbourne, Possum Bourne. Craig Vincent, his new co-driver, because it's been uncertain times for Possum Bourne since being involved in a fatal accident in Rally Australia in 93, and then trying to regain his confidence. And certainly, in this special stage, one looking very determined to do it, going up very aggressively against the Australian Rally champion, Neil Bates. Incredibly dry so that anybody leading the field has a nice advantage. Possum nicely hooked up to the apex of the corner there, really going well. On the longest stage in the event, Flowerdale, the Mount Disappointment area, 28.43 kilometres around and then Ed Ordinsky was to run Group A, but his car wasn't quick enough and he had entered the Group N car as well. And as that didn't pass in Group A scrutineering, he was forced to run Group N to the disappointment of some of the competitors, but not Neil Bates. Seeded three, the defending champion and three times Australian champion, just a little bit untidy there. Coming over from New Zealand, their Group N champion up against Australia's best, Ed Ordinsky, Rhys Jones. A good, aggressive, experienced driver. Special stage two is Murchison, 8.8 .8 kilometres of fine gravel and Possum Bourne 21 seconds ahead of Neil Bates after the first special stage. Absolutely flying and giving Bates a real target to chase. Bates having to prepare his own cars, build them and run the team as well. Then we go on to special stage three, Parrot Creek. Gravel again, 7.3 kilometers. In group N, Ed Ordinsky having to be neat and tidy, as you have to be when you've got less power, about 220 meters. But Bates with much more power to play with in the Celica. Nicoli not so, because this is a 1600 cc car in which he's had a lot of success. Then Possum Bourne, back on board with him. And very busy as they come to the end of the first day. So it's been a very satisfying one for the Subaru team. Only four special stages on the Friday and just over 50 kilometres. But already Possum Bourne was 31 seconds up on Neil Bates, with Ed Ordinsky leading Group N by just seven seconds from Rhys Jones. There were still 180 kilometres of rallying to come, and that on roads made a little more tricky by overnight rain. On day two, they come back to some of the stages from day one. Flowerdale, Mount Disappointment. It's a very different Flowerdale from yesterday. Overnight rain has really settled the dust and made it much more slippery as Possum Bourne's finding out. Bates chasing him still, so close in some of the sections yesterday, 21 seconds on stage one, but then only one second, then seven seconds, then two seconds between these two warring Group A combatants. Plenty of attitude, Bates gets the nose into the corner nice and tight and tidy and then it understeers a little bit on the exit. Now on special stage six, Murchison, back to that stage from yesterday.
Mr. Super Smooth, Ed Hitzker. Then Dean Herridge, who make a very good fist of things, the son of the Australian champion. And then, glorious environment for a special stage in the rally, Domaine Chandon. Welcome. A gravel and grass stage in the grounds of this lovely winery, only 1.7 kilometres around. somewhere around 300 horsepower. The six-speed dog box whining there. Can change gears in them without even going for the clutch. And Neil Bates in the same section chasing the New Zealander. Being chased then by Marty Beckton, and he is a good young talent, just 23 years old. And then to the final special stage for day two, Hillsville Showground, 0.87 kilometres of gravel, very spectacular with the rain streaming down. It started on the last special stage. Conditions that really challenge a top driver like the Triple Australian Rally Champion Neil Bates, Coral Taylor too, tremendous co-driver as well as looking after a lot of the team logistics. Possum born just as effective in the wet as he was in the previous day's dust, pushing his lead out to 1 minute 50 over Neil Bates, with just three special stages and 65 kilometres to go on the final day. In Group N, it was still very close, with Ordinsky holding a 13 second margin over his New Zealand rival Rhys Jones, as the action resumed on the roads around Healesville. Glorious country around the Yarra Valley. No wonder people go rallying to drive and to go quickly in glorious conditions like this. Sport having an absolute ball. Victory within his grasp as he knows. Neil Bates tending to play safe now. Too much of a margin to try and catch Possum Bourne. Then in car 24, Graham Wise and Robert Beekman going very well, the Victorian pair. Finally, will come home in sixth position overall. A very good result for the less well-financed team. And Neil Bates, still frustrated by not being able to match the speed of the Subaru. He feels it's his car just as much as it is him and Coral Taylor. But the man dominating the field and on the final special stage now, Ben Cairn, possum born, doing a good job with his new co-driver, Ed Ordinsky coming into third place and leader of Group N. And the Corolla Cup being led home by Simon Evans and Joe Brick, the Victorian pair. So a very nice result for possum born and his new co-driver, Craig Vincent, delighted with their victory in the Rally of Melbourne. So, Possum Bourne, the fastest in 14 of the 16 special stages in the Rally of Melbourne, finishing nearly three minutes ahead of Neil Bates, with victory in Group N going to Ed Ordinsky by 35 seconds after an enthralling battle with Rhys Jones. After the first major round of the 1996 Australian Rally Championship, Ed Ordinsky was in the lead but he was also the only one of the top drivers to have done more than one of the 15 rounds of the series. After his first rally in Australia since 1993, Possum Bourne was a very satisfied man. 
Possum uh, must be very exciting. First rally back into this championship, then you've crossed the line of Victor. Yeah, spot on. <laughs> I couldn't have wanted it for any better. It's just a lot of people put a lot of hard work in, and we're really, really, really pleased to be here and to try and finish off the job we started a few years ago. It would be spot on if we can do that. Well, uh, you didn't waste any time today. You, we thought you might have held back a bit, but it looks like you've pushed on pretty hard. Yeah, the roads were quite good. The first one was a bit slippery, but these last two were absolutely fantastic. It would be a shame to drive slow, so we'd give it to it, and it was, it was, it was really good. Mount Gambier's famous Blue Lake had a little more water in it than usual before the second major round of the championship. 13 centimetres of rain in the week preceding the rally had given the South Australian organisers plenty of headaches, forcing them to cut back the planned 13 special stages to eight and the competitive kilometres from 140 to 80. There were a few weary competitors as they headed into the morning of the one day event. The roads around here are traditionally very um, slippery, even when slightly damp, let alone when under a torrential downpour. And the surface changes a lot. You go from white sandy stuff to red clay to black soil to mossy green. Uh, yeah, keeps you on your toes. If you go too slow, well, you're going to get thumped. And if you go too fast, you're going to go off. So, but that's it's like that in any rally. You've just got to get used to the conditions here and then go from it. This this new format with a day's recce before each round or a couple of days recce before each round is, is spot on. It gives you the chance to have a decent look, pick the right tyres and have the car set up properly so that then you can get in and have, do the job properly. Special stage one, Mount Gambia showgrounds. Only 630 metres, but very intense. and making very good use of the pro-drive built car from England. And very happy with his co-driver too, Craig Vincent. <laughs> 38 seconds for Possum. Neil Bates now chasing car two. Triple Australian Rally Champion. A lot of work done on this car since last time. A lot of chat between Team Toyota Europe. Bits further development, hoping that it's more competitive than previously. Tighter there than Possum was. Incredibly busy. And 37 seconds for Neil Bates and Odinsky now. And in the Group A car, it's second outing. It's an old car, but brought up to Evo 3 standards. And going very well, building towards a 37 second time, which gives him equal fastness with Neil Bates. But now, out into the forest, and big, long, straight, fast forest too. Gooch's Scrub, 14.73 kilometres. Possumborn, flying in the Subaru. Bates and Coral Taylor determined to stay in front too. Now Michael Guest banging and making more noise even than Bates car was making a couple of events ago. And of course competing in Group N. Graham Wise going very well and in fact finally finishing sixth outright in the event, putting in a good performance. Possum has born now out on Wild Dog. Special stage three, and even longer than the last one, 15 uh, kilometres on this special stage. Possum born two seconds up and trying to get more time on Bates. Coming in at 8.15, Bates chasing him. Trying to get it back. Very quick and very efficient and tidy too. But putting in at 8.13, so they're tied at the head of the field. And then, more conservative in the Mitsubishi Lancer. Not as quick, so dropping 13 seconds to Bates. Then David West. Another good, hard Group N runner. Now on to Mayora, 11.2 kilometres around. Possumborn and Neil Bates tied at the head of the field. Going absolutely flat strap. Possum board really being forced to try hard here, much harder than he had to try in Melbourne. 
And Neil Bates pushing him all the way. And then the Australian Falcon XR6 of Steve Winwood, ever entertaining, ninth outright. No shortage of great action, despite the reduced program. And at the halfway mark, the results could scarcely have been closer. Just a second separated Possum Bourne and Neil Bates. And in fourth and fifth place, a tremendous group end battle. Only 11 seconds between Michael Guest and David West. We're chasing Possum Harden. He's got a whole one second on us at the moment, so it should be very tight towards the finish. You've looked in sensational form. You're obviously carrying a lot of speed in those roads, and there's some big jumps out there as well. Ah, uh, yeah, there's some huge jumps out there. Uh, yeah, we've, we've done a bit of work to the car since Melbourne. Uh, we don't particularly like getting beaten, so, so we're trying to make amends for it, but uh, it's very tight at the moment. Often travelling virtually as fast as circuit races, but on forestry tracks surrounded by trees, rally crews are more conscious than most about safety as Possum Bourne points out. Basically when you run a rally car that you have mandatory safety things that you have to have. The, the most ob obvious thing is the roll cage which protects the car in a rollover or, or whatever or hit a, hit a bank or something like that. We have the serious seats here that support us so we don't get thrown around therefore you just sit there and it, and it holds you in comfortably and, and you're comfortable while you're driving. And we have six point seat harness seat belts over the shoulder, around the side in between the legs and that, that locks you into the seat then. We have an onboard fire extinguisher system that works with a switch outside and inside. If anything hit, goes on fire or anything like that, we just hit the button. So you hit the switch and it happens all automatically? Yeah, we obviously, as you can see, we're fireproof overalls and then underneath we have the fireproof underwear as well. Crash helmet, which obviously everybody sees. The rest of it is just designed so there's nothing there flailing around in the car that's going to cause you to get your foot tangled up getting on the brake pedal. And that just little normal things like that make a big difference. And now into it again, Gucci's scrub. Second time Possum born, twice Asia Pacific Rally Champion, once New Zealand Rally Champion, more than 20 major rally wins. International V-seated driver, the English-built ProDrive Subaru, a very quick, potent car, the world champion car last year. And Possum Bourne loves it. And Neil Bates is pretty delighted too with the way the Celica he built back in 1994 is going. Another international V-seated driver. Bates trying to improve too. Coming in in fact at an 8.06. So he's two seconds faster, but in fact four seconds outside Possum's time. Both of them quicker than they were in the morning. Ed Ordinsky, car number three. The 39-year-old ex-school teacher from South Australia, Group N champion many times in Rally Australia. And then Michael Guest, who's moved out of Group A into Group N, reversing what Ed Ordinsky's done and going very well with it too. And then Possum Bourne on Wild Dog. When you're going down these long, long straights, some of them have these huge jumps and it really does frighten you a bit because it it's very hard to pick how fast to go over them. When we do reconnaissance, we're only restricted to speeds like 60 kilometers an hour. But when we're in the rally car on these roads, as you can see, we're doing nearly 200 k's an hour, or at least 180. And we have to brake and get the speed right over the crest. Now, the end, this one coming up at the end, we got one hump and then we have a second one. So you, you commit yourself over the first jump and you, you're actually committed to the second jump. Then off to my order, 11.34 kilometres for Bates now in car number two. Very good competitive stage this. Very tight corner and Bates really bogs down a little bit, gets untidy there. And in fact had been feeling as though he had a slow puncture. And by perhaps even here, by the end of the stage, had done three kilometres on a flat tyre, having ripped the left hand bead off the rim. Not the same for Fossum Bourne though. Michael Guest, absolutely waking the forest in his Group N car. It's gone so well through this event, not only in Group N, but outright. Tremendous performance from him and a great battle too against Car 8 West. And they have been at it hammer and tongs, only 10 seconds between them. And the second XR6 Falcon, James Sargent. 
in this car struggling with all the power that it's got to get uphill and digging itself in and the co-driver Graham Legg Stoker so far he made it so funny but I'm push it and now the Mount Gambier Showgrounds for the final 630 metres of this rally and Possum Bourne loving it, loving the Subaru WRX Impreza, loving the final stages, it'll take him to a second major victory in Australia in his comeback drive. And for a man that's invested so much money in the car, in the event, in building back up his reputation, it's been a superb result, but a hard-fought one, one that he's had to earn. Possum up by 16 seconds overall, and that included Bates having to drive for three kilometres on a flat tyre on the second last stage. So Ed Ordinsky was still leading the championship. But with four events already under his belt, whereas Possum Bourne and Neil Bates had only racked up two, and with two out of two to his credit, Possum Bourne could not have been happier. We, we just we can't believe our luck actually. <laughs> Things are really starting to go our way. We had to work really, really hard for it today. Especially this afternoon after lunch, I went out there and gritted my teeth and went for it. And uh, it's worked out for us, so we're really pleased. But, you know, fair juice to Neil and the boys. They really got their car going good now and they, they really took it to us and we, we had to work really hard. For the third round, the Australian Rally Championship travelled across the continent to Perth to some of the best rally roads in the country and their renowned ball-bearing surfaces. In late autumn, there was plenty of dust. 61 cars, 12 special stages and 160 kilometres competitive. Once again, it was Vaughan, Bates and Ordinsky who would fight out Group A. With Group N, a battle royal between Michael Guest and Stuart Reid in his first major outing. the end of day one, Possum Bourne again had the edge over his rivals, but there was a major problem looming for the Subaru camp. Possum Bourne really now with his tail up fine, and the final stage for the day, but the centre differential that hasn't been working well at any time in any of the events so far this year, increasingly worrying Possum Bourne. So a 23 second break to Possum Bourne over Neil Bates, with Ordinsky only four seconds further back. And in Group N, even tighter. A mere two second lead to Stuart Reid over Michael Guest. It hasn't gone as well as I hoped because we, st we still have this centre diff problem which is driving me spare actually, to be honest. And, and what it does is it's working fine, one corner in the car goes around it like it should. And then the next corner you arrive at it, it feels like it's a real rear wheel drive car so it wants to slide like hell. So. The rest of the car is perfect. It's just, it's just some problem we have here, and I don't know what it is. But out to start the second day on the transport stage, the first special stage, Possible, the leader of the event, stopped, and with real trouble. We weren't feeling that confident with coming out here today because with the centre diff not working properly and uh, with Ed and Neil not really that far behind us and especially those two very close and it was going to be a hard fight to the finish anyway so uh, it was going to be hard work and if the car not working too well who knows you know maybe it's better stopped here rather than off the road. Gearbox trouble means that Neil Bates heads the field but by only six seconds from the overnight gap between him and Ed Ordinsky and on Gorry and this a quick one, an average speed of 123 kilometres an hour. Neil Bates at the front of the field now, wondering what he can do with the Celica. And in fact, going out to a 5.37 as Ed Ordinsky gets away after a quick service, knowing that he probably couldn't have caught the Subaru, but he does have a chance against Neil Bates of the Celica. 
and finally coming in one second slower, so going up to a seven second deficit. And Reed, jubilant with his lead over Michael Guest overnight, just two seconds, but delighted in his first run for the Australian Rally Championship this year to be in such a good position. But suddenly Guest gets very serious and pulls out on Reed on this section. 12 seconds and continues to build on that through the event. We come on board with Neil Bates on Mundaring Special Stage 8. The roads in this event are very, very narrow, so so it's very important to keep the car as straight as possible. Like there's times when we're doing 180 kilometres per hour through stages, like you can see here, and, and you've got bushes basically brushing either side of the car, and, and you're relying 100% on the pace nodes. Special stage nine, 21 kilometres, all the hairpin. The average speed this time is 131 kilometres an hour. And Neil Bates, who pulled another second on that last stage, leads by eight seconds over Ed Ordinsky. And he really is trying on this sensationally quick stage. But so too is Ed Ordinsky. Eight seconds behind at this stage. seven seconds, goes out just one second in arrears, Bates still leading. And then McCarthy, all that wraps up the West Australian Rally Championship with his performance. We go on to special stage 10, Reservoir, fairly long, 26.6 kilometres, bringing the cumulative kilometres competitive to 143, and another quickie, an average speed of 118, with Bates charging. They have a ball bearing surface, which is unique to Perth. It's nowhere, it's not like that in the, anywhere else in the country, and and that makes the roads quite slippery. Uh, the car just skates around on top of the road rather than on, on the on the eastern states. You dig into the road. Yesterday, this was a bad special stage for Odinsky because he was caught a little bit behind Michael Guest, and it wasn't too good for Neil Bates today. It was a shocker for Bates because he put in a 13.48, the fastest man yesterday with Possiborn, 13.43, Ordinsky, 13.25, absolutely curls himself to the lead of the event, 20 seconds gain. We go on to 11 now, and Neil Bates is responding. that hard. Perhaps he knows the winner of this event the last four years has become the Australian champion. And Nicolai, the reigning Australian Formula 2 champion, doing a sensational job. And then special stage 12, it's Bates, and he's trying to get back some of that time. He can't find 24 seconds. No way against Kuminski. But can he pull some back? Can he equal his time? So a 2.06 for Neil Bates and Ordinsky trying for everything, absolutely inspired at this stage. Charging on the final special stage, the final few kilometres of this wonderful rally in the West. And a 2.06 as well. And Michael Guest in the Group N car rocketing through too. What a good job he's done in an event that saw 61 starters and just 39 gallant finishes for what's been an enthralling event. An amazing second day with Ed Ordinsky darting from third to first place ahead of Neil Bates and by 24 seconds. Likewise in Group N, Michael Guest not only took over first place from Stuart Reid, but also pulled out 40 seconds. A pretty convincing result. The race for the driver's title was not as clear as it seemed, with Ed Ordinsky increasing his lead to 190 points, but still with two more events completed than Bates or Bourne. That wasn't worrying a somewhat surprised and very pleased Ed Ordinsky, however. 
Uh, it, it feels terrific and a little surprising, I suppose, because um, you know it's a very early stages for the car, and and uh, everybody knows we've had a few teething troubles with it, but uh, it it really did the job here. It was a very good thing. Uh, could have gone either way, and uh, Neil was unfortunate to just nose off the road a little bit on the. Uh, second to last or third to last stage and that just uh, you know we were pretty much equal going into that we've got our noses in front and a sprint rally like this that's uh, all it takes while most people go to queensland to relax to enjoy the beaches and the climate or even play a little golf it was driving of a different kind that brought bates Bourne, and co to the heart of the sunshine coast in july the rally of Queensland started at the Kiwana Shopping Centre and Neil Bates showed them right from the start that this would be his turn for victory. With the 5,000 shoppers entertained and the Toyota Celica one second clear of Bourne and two ahead of Ordinsky, the cars headed off to some more serious rally terrain. at the head of the field, developing this Group A customer kit car. The Bates gets out after him. Possum Bourne busy in the Subaru. In fact, coming in finally to 3.15, which means Neil Bates leads the event by seven seconds over Edward Inski and Possum Bourne tied. We then come to David West in the uh, Mitsubishi Lancer Group N and only 10 seconds slower on this stage than the Group A car, the fastest car, of Neil Bates. And then Michael Guest in what will be a big Group N battle as they go on to Mitch Ernst. Special stage three, 15 and a half kilometres. Bates fastest on the first two stages. Here comes in at 8 minutes 51, followed then by Possum Bourne. Ed Ordinsky added 10 seconds to Bates' time. Possum Bourne, gearbox troubles though, at 1.48. And Stuart reads into the group end battle. Then special stage 5, Woodford, 5.81 kilometres. Michael Guest. Sounding like a pro-gun lobbyist in a big hurry chasing Stuart Reed, who's really serving it up to guest in Group N. Then down further in the field now after that gearbox problem, Craig Vincent booking in for Possum Bourne, seeded three but running back down in the field. Not a happy man despite having done a faster special stage on four after losing nearly two minutes on special stage three. Lee Achterberg from Umundi and goes off in a big way. Neil Bates leading the rally now by 41 seconds and very busy. An interesting thing here, the roads go from a flat out road to a tight, narrow, twisty, cresty road and then back onto flat out roads. So, so the conditions are always varying and you really have to listen to the pace notes and and uh, take it all in because it, it doesn't flow along on the same, it, it changes all the time. And on to special stage seven, Barumba, six and three quarter kilometres, Ed Ordinsky. Now within 23 seconds of Neil Bates because Bates spun on that last stage. Dropped 20 seconds, the closest they've been since special stage three. And Bates gets out though and knows that he has to respond. He has to repel the invaders. And in fact, in this one, he comes out and he is fastest. For the fifth time in seven special stages, he's the quickest. Followed in by David West. Good uphill braking point out wide on the embankment. Reed really trying. Held the group end lead until a crash on special stage 13. And in the dark, Ed Ordinsky fastest for the first time in the event on special stage nine. A good effort. Followed home in this instance by Neil Bates, who's had his best day in the championship this year. So the end of day one in the Rally of Queensland saw Neil Bates leading Ed Ordinsky by 35 seconds, with Possum Bourne still in third place, despite a disastrous day thanks to a ridiculously small gearbox problem. Possum had a pretty tough day out there yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I will. It's just one of them things, isn't it? It's the sport sometimes. It's just 16 cent no O-ring actually uh, blew and the guys tried to fix it in there and it couldn't so they had to pull the gearbox out fix it on the ground put it back in cost us a lot of road penalties winning rallies depends on great teamwork 
Possumborn's co-driver, Craig Vincent, knows all about it. The only way we can drive quickly through the stages is obviously on a very good set of notes and uh, it's very important that uh, for Possum that I, uh, that I get the notes out to him confidently and on time and, uh, and, and noting uh, any, uh, any dangers or obstacles that, uh, that can be in the way and are going to cause problems to us and uh, so you know, the warning signs have got to be there early. Calling the corners late for him is, uh, is of no value at all. We'll be off the road at that point. Five left through dip. Straight eight to crest. We grade our corners um, on a numbers style, and uh, with what one being the tightest and eight being the fastest, and um, and everything in between. Um, we're we're looking for corners that tighten. We're looking for crests. We're looking for the speed that we can go over a crest. We're looking for crossings and gates. Um, we're looking for long or short corners, and um, and and really any anything that is going to cause a problem uh, on the road. Seven right over crest in sixty. Eight right over crest in 150. It wasn't the Bourne Vincent combination making the running in Queensland, it was Bates and Taylor. Six special stage wins under their belt already, and leading off day two. end of the field is shown by Possum Bourne absolutely flying his third fastest special stage in the first of five consecutive to so come aboard a very special Subaru five on a special ride. Tritons to three left Tritons 60 short six left 33 four left and three four right in bump 30 straight eight crest 64 5 left and long 6 7 right 30. The special stage 13 is the second go at Barumba, 63 quarter kilometres. Neil Bates at the front end of the field, putting in a 409, keeping the pursuers honest. Ed Odinsky a 411 and Possum Bourne out after them. Now he's teamed down to gearbox change in 14 minutes and a 403 there and possum for war. Then you traverse for the second time. 21.4 kilometers. Neil Bates leading now by a minute 20. Confident, flowing, knowing, knowing he can pace himself. Mustn't be careless, but mustn't relax too much either. Ed Ordinsky. Bates time back there, 13.07, Ordinsky at 13.05, so you cannot relax, and Possum Bourne, even quicker. Then, Michael Guest, now leading Group N, after Stuart Reed, and he's doing that at about 180 kilometres an hour, followed by David West, his Group N contender and rival, seated fifth, ran home, finished in fifth place. Then on to the final special stage, second time round Forest Drive, 15.3 kilometres, Neil Bates, first at the end of day one, fastest on day two, led the event to the finish, and very stylish and classy with it. The first victory of the season for Neil Bates and Toyota, a reasonably comfortable 1 minute 15 second lead over Ed Odinsky. In fourth place, and taking out Group N, Michael Guest, ahead of David West. That left a driver's point score of Ed Ordinsky still leading. But with the high-scoring Rally Australia and the FAI Rally of Canberra still to come, it was wide open. Yeah, you must be delighted with that performance. I'd say we're bloody wrapped, actually. Um, yeah, we haven't won an event this year and we've been trying extremely hard and done a lot of development on the car and full credit to the whole team for, for getting it all together and, and winning this event. We're absolutely stoked. Yesterday, we. Um Stuart Reid got the better of us, uh, especially on the last stage, and uh, we had a 28 nine, or 29 second deficit today to make up. And uh, I spent all last night thinking about it. We decided to have the big charge this morning, and and uh, for once for me, it's paid off. And uh, we were more than quicker than Stuart on the first couple, and then uh, he threw it in a hole, and it made our job a bit easier. So 
No, great, great result for us and another group and win. We can't ask for more than that. Possumborn went to Tasmania for the Southern Safari needing a change of luck. Mechanical problems in the Forest Rally of WA and Rally Queensland had been followed by a rollover in the Rally of New Zealand and his goal of a first Australian Championship wasn't looking quite as achievable as it had earlier in the series. 88 kilometres on the first day started on the banks of the Derwent River. The Kiwi leading off in the opening 1.35 kilometre special stage. But Neil Bates, buoyed by his Queensland win, and Ed Ordinsky leading the championship, had also come down south to win. And the Canberra driver was the fastest by two seconds around the opening special stage. Now out in the forest, Leeson's 13.63 kilometres, again possum born at the head of the field. This is the car to beat in terms of specification. Car refurbished and ready to go, and possum born very keen to haul back points that he lost in recent rounds of the championship. Great rally weapon, Subaru WRX. Like all the top contenders, four-wheel drive and turbocharged two litre. And now Neil Bates brilliantly quick on the first special stage, two seconds faster than anybody, really has the Celica operating. But unfortunately early on special stage two, big problems. A broken front cross member is the problem where the lower control arm mounts to it, you can see it dragging and then the radius rod pulls out and that lets the wheels go free and working against each other. And finally on special stage three after completing two, the drive shaft pulls out of the gearboxes, Ed Ordinsky goes flying by. Look at the pace of the car, absolutely healthy. And one second slower than Possum Born on Special Stage 1, one faster than Born here. So they are now equal leaders and Bates is out of the event. Then Michael Guest, with that banging system to keep the turbo up on boost all the time. The winner here in 94, outstanding recently in Rally New Zealand, where he was fifth outright and won Group N. He really is on form since he's come back from Group A for the production car class and doing a tremendous job. David West and Tony Best, Tony Best down from Queensland, to support David West and they keep Michael Guest honest. And then Possum Born Special Stage 3 now. Regar is 10.3 kilometres and Possum Born's in flying form. Very quick corner and now leading the event by one second. Then Graham Bourne from Canberra, Tom Smith his co-driver from Queensland, along with Michael Guest and David West, two seconds separating the three of them over six minutes. Special stage rallying. Cassins now, 13.7 kilometres, the longest stage. Possum Bourne in a big hurry. Good on special stage four, now six seconds in front in the event. Keen to rub it in, keen to demoralise his opposition. Being followed by Ed Ordinsky and already with gearbox problems in the sequential gearbox. Like a motorcycle gearbox. Comes back to the same central position, just keep hitting it in one direction or the other. The trouble is, sometimes when he's in sixth and he hits it and he wants to get fourth, he's still in sixth. And the stages are getting longer. Straight this is lane, express, 17 kilometres. And obviously eight, late on Saturday. Five, and the interesting right, thing here is to listen to how eight. early Craig Vincent advises the driver of when the corners are coming up. Straight eight crest, 50. Caution right over crest, flip five left. And seven left over crest to sudden six right. left over crest and five right, 50, four left in, 60. And the end result of it all works well after 88 Three, kilometres four, competitive left. and 73 kilometres back to the park five, Ferme six, rest over point crest in Hobart. In. And this pair at the head of the field in the Southern Safari.
left blip long six right so the first retirement in 17 events for neil bates in his toyota Celica, and the end also of 16 straight top two places for possum born however a 45 second lead over ed Ordinsky, who had a devil of an opening day with gear selection problems it's been pretty difficult to drive as you can imagine arriving at a hairpin in sixth gear thinking you've downshifted to third and uh, throwing it and finding you're still in sixth and uh, it's, it's made an interesting rally for us to say the least. It's been a tricky event, it's very very slippery and, it, and you've got to be a bit careful like you can't drive it into the corners with your foot hard on the gas so it's been quite good that the competition isn't so strong this time both of the others having a bit of trouble we can just sort of dictate the pace we want to drive at. 58 kilometres out of Hobart to plenty, 13.1 kilometres and Possum Bourne, despite that lead, it's only half a second a kilometre, so he must keep up the concentration. This stage here is the same as all the stages. It's very, very fast with lots and lots of press. You have to be so careful, it's so slippery, the car wants to slip to the edge of the road, and the edges are, are full of rocks and, and ditches. But I found the stages here so slippery, even when they're dry, the car wants to go very, very sideways, as you saw just at the last corner. But now it's really flat out for quite a long time. Some heart stopping stuff there because he knows he has to keep on the job. Stay ahead of this man, Ed Ordinsky. Quick, neat, efficient, and only three seconds slower than Possum Bourne despite a puncture near the end of the stage. Graham Vaughan and Tom Smith. Fourth time in eight stages they've been faster than Michael Guest and now they're only 14 seconds behind him. Possum Bourne on to Cassins, beautifully set up in the Subaru, but beaten by three seconds by Ed Ordinsky. Michael Guest now. Rolled in this event last year when he was leading it. David West, no banging and popping like Michael Guest because he got no anti-lag on the turbo, but a very good fifth outright in this event and second in Group N. Then on to Uxbury, 16.3 kilometres. Possum Bourne still at the head of the field, playing with different tyres tries to get everything right. The biggest problem with when it's very, very fast between the tr trees like this is that you'll get the odd one where there's a bit of a ditch in the road. Now, these, these organisers have been very good. They've put a caution where it is. And you watch the car, when we hit it, it kicks the back right up and then you nose dives into the road. Those are the most dangerous things for a rally driver in a car that will do the sort of speeds down as well. And we've just got to be careful of those all the time. And then settlement. 17.2 kilometres, the reverse of a previous stage. Possum born, looking beautiful, smooth, right out to the edge of the road. Knows he's pretty safe now if he doesn't make an error. Really just trying to do it nicely, tidily, safely. Still having a go where it's safe. Let's see victory in his sights. Unusual for Mr. Ordinsky to have an untidy motor car, but to happen on the previous stage cost him only a minute. And it certainly didn't cost him second place in what's been a very good performance, but dogged by mechanical problems with the new sequential gearbox. But they'll get that sorted out. And are still very much in the championship chase. Graham Vaughan fought his way up to third outright, got past Michael Guest in a classic battle. Then 64 kilometres back to Hobart for the last special stage, 8,000 people turning out to honour Possum Bourne, victorious after 470 kilometres total and 150 kilometres competitive in the Southern Safari and looking just beautiful as he cruises it onto the finishing line and to his third victory for the season. And that must restore their confidence. A very good performance. Well done, Possum Bourne and Craig Vincent. Well done, my bro. Spot on. Yes. Got it. A delighted Possum Bourne, two minutes 22 ahead of Ed Ordinsky. Graham Bourne just three seconds ahead of Michael Guest, the leading contender in the stock standard production car class. That produced a driver's championship points table of Ed Ordinsky leading, but with one more event covered than Possum Bourne or Neil Bates. 
and the three of them separated by just 190 points. With three wins out of five, Bourne's title aspirations were clearly back on track. Took the pressure off a bit when Neil went out yesterday and then Ed had some problems, so we were able to drive our own ways, which was, which was good because after New Zealand having the accident, you know, it's, you need a bit of time to get the confidence and everything back, and we got that, so I'm pretty happy. The sixth major round of the series, Rally Australia in Perth, was also a round of the World Rally Championship, with 300 points on the line for the leading Australian Rally Championship car. Once again, it was Possum Bourne coming up trumps, and Neil Bates in trouble. The Toyota going off on day three. So at the start of the rally of Coffs Harbour, Possum Bourne was in sight of the title, leapfrogging Odinsky on the driver's table to lead the championship by 55 points, with just two rounds of the championship to go. A grand and fancy start, a very patriotic one for this Australian championship round at Coffs Harbour on the northern New South Wales coast of the Park Beach Plaza. Special stage one, not only parking area, but as ever, Fleetwood speed humps. Ed Odinsky won this in 1990, Getting away first and hoping for a good run. Over one of the speed humps. And he's got a problem because he's not getting drive through. You can hear the engine revving and he's going very slowly. A tragic start to the rally for Ed Ordinsky, taking 36 seconds finally to do the special stage as then Neil Bates gets away fired up and knowing that he's got to produce the sort of performances that won him here the last three years. Possum Bourne away, fired up by Rally Australia, eighth out right there, as well as a lot of competitive motoring, very much in practice. In a very quick car, look at him, very confident on the bit. On two right, and left. 70 to finish. And 24 seconds also to Possum Bourne, so a tie at the front of the field and into Shelter Road, which we have again later in the event, and Ed Odinsky round! Not often that you see that. Boy, he is trying hard and having a richest time. Broken drive shaft on special stage one, now a spin, and also a flat tyre right rear there. And Bates absolutely flying as he knows he has to if he's to stay in the Australian Rally Championship. Made this silly a much more competitive through the year. Now Possum Bourne, really sharp after all that rallying in Rally Australia. Looking glorious and fast and fake for 17 seconds. David West in Group N doesn't have Michael Guest to battle with. He's already tied up that title. But the battle will be with Stuart Reed. Reed should be a worthy rival. Going conservatively at this stage. Five seconds slower on this stage than West. And then Gates Ridge. Neil Bates still in a big hurry. A spin on the last stage didn't help. <laughs> Trying to keep it all together. Much more confident than before Rally Australia. Really building this season. And then West, leading Group N, showing some really flying form. Neat, tidy, quick. Bad news for Ross McKenzie is that Bob Nicola, his teammate running ahead of him, has already caught fire and is out of the event. But this, the leading Australia Cup entry. And then, Arawara. South Wales Rally Championship contender. And Ed Odinsky trying to cool down as they try to fix his car. The gearbox is moving about, so when he changes gear, the gearbox moves with the lever. If they get him underway again. And Neil Bates continues to chase. Keen and fired up, 
desperately trying to get out after Possum Bourne's electric times at this event so far. Let's see how Bates and Taylor do it in the Salika. The pressure is there to to give all the calls at exactly the right moment. And because some of the roads in this event are so incredibly fast, uh, if you make a mistake, then it's obviously quite serious and, and it'll be uh, quite a serious outcome. But this is what I actually love about rallying. I love this teamwork within the rally car. And uh, if you can get that perfect, the sense of achievement is just, I mean, basically that's what I rally for. Last two special stages, they've taken them both from Possum Bourne. Only one second each stage, a 20 second gap to Possum Bourne's advantage. Bella Spur, Bordinsky at the front of the field. On the track, but not in times, and Bates trying too hard. Overshoots in that slow climbing corner there. Bordinsky probably a little conservative. Bates, maximum attack and absolutely too much. On to McRae's Road, the last stage for the day, Neil Bates, beautiful country, and Possum Lord in a big hurry too. Coffs Harbour is probably the twistiest rally that we come to. It just keeps going on and on and on a lot of the time. You get, you get some reasonably quick bits, and then you'll get into a sharp corner like this one here. And then you just got to get it out. Now, what the problem here is it's quite slippery surface, and a lot of powdery, dusty stuff, and if you get off the line, it's very hard to get some grip and, and to try and get it to drive off the corner. So you'll see me swinging on the wheel quite a lot. What I'm trying to do is find the best grippiest part of the road. So I'm actually moving the car around more than I normally would to try and find the best line and the best grip on the road. Because there's three, two cars in front of me, they are leaving some tracks and that's usually the best place to get grip is to follow their lines on the road. And, and then the back wheels get plenty of traction so it doesn't slide so much off the corners. That sort of ride costs you plenty of dollars, except when you do it like this. And David West leading group end at the end of the day, except that he dropped five seconds on the last special stage, and Simon Evans is leading the Corolla Cup, eight cars in the division. 88 kilometres and eight special stages completed, in what was a very good day for Possum Bourne, 39 seconds ahead of Neil Bates and an excellent performance by David West, leading Group N in the absence of Michael Guest. For Bates, a couple of errors had been very costly. Uh, we're 39 seconds behind Possum now, and, and a couple of spins would account for 30 odd of that, so, so it should be very close, but we'll see if we can make up a bit of time today. The overnight regroup sees them the second time now on Shoulder Road, and in rally order, Possum born at the front of the field, and attack. Six special stages, 82 Ks, and he wants to do them quickly. And Bates wants to pull back some of that 39 seconds. Honestly, don't know if he's got the speed to do it. And Ed Ordinsky, he's had no answer either so far to possible board speed in the Subaru. But he won't give up trying. And adds 10 seconds to the time Bates has done, and in group N, the battle's still on. 56 seconds between them after day one. West. Then Reed in car five. And six seconds added to the lead of West there. Second time on Gates Reach from Possum Board, so confident, looking absolutely marvelous. And right and three four left, 30. Three left, block four right. Neil Bates, so far, no answer. Just can't quite find the speed, but he's certainly trying. Rod Salmon, running seventh at the end of day one, finishes finally fifth. A very good performance. Then to McRae's Road, second time there as well. Possible, equaled on the last stage by Neil Bates. So, really keen to start increasing the lead again. And Bates trying to make sure that doesn't happen. In fact, drops six seconds to Possum Board this time. As you're coming along here, this is actually quite a fast piece of road. And uh, from my point of view, it's just total concentration because I'm constantly looking from the road to my notes and uh, making sure that I know exactly where I am on the road in relation to those notes and basically calling 
each corner um, from the previous corner so as we're doing one corner like we are now I'm actually giving the information to Neil of how tight the following corner is. It's a very delicate balance as Stuart Reid knows because he now leads group in. David West is here to bank, rolled, so Reid now leads that class. Ahead of John Long and Damien, father and son. And Rick Bates, their rival of the New South Wales Championships, out. So they will tie that with him and finish sixth overall. Ross McKenzie flying and winning ultimately Formula 2, 14th overall. With his co-driver Tony Brandon. But on to Sherwood, the final special stage and the third longest. And Possum Bourne nearly with the title in his grip. Everything's running through your head now. You're worried about anything going wrong and... You know, the, the ch championship's yours if you can get it to the end and not make a mistake, so you're a little bit worried about overdoing it, so you've got to drive sensibly, and we take off now into the first stage, and this turned out to be the most difficult part of the day. The first half of this stage was so slippery. If you can see, you'll see that the road's been used before, so we used it yesterday, and there's wheel tracks, and if you get out of the wheel tracks, the car really steps sideways, just like that, just there. It just flicks around on you, and the same on this one here. It's it's really difficult to keep the car in line, and I found it quite a struggle. Once we got through the stage a bit, it got better, but this this particular part here I, was very, very difficult. Possum Bourne adds the Australian Championship to the New Zealand and the Asia Pacific, and Neil Bates hands over the Australian title. Triple champion, but not to be fourth, or not this year. Stuart Reid not only wins Group N with his new navigator Craig Lee, but fourth outright. It was a courageous and well-deserved victory by Possum Bourne and Craig Vinson. Just over a minute ahead of Neil Bates and Coral Taylor. Ed Ordinsky really well off the pace in this event. Stuart Reid was the best of the Group N, but really he inherited that when David West went out on the third special stage from the end. That meant with one rally to go, Possum Bourne was unbeatable in the Australian Rally Championship. 255 points clear of Ed Ordinsky. Michael Guest, who didn't compete in Coffs, had already wrapped up the Group N title. The whole year's work that went into it and, and a huge investment from ourselves, from Subaru, Pirelli and everybody else to give us a hand. It, it, it's not a cheap exercise and it's uh, nice to be able to repay them with a championship. Winning rallies is what it's all about. It feels, feels fantastic. The championship is the, is the cream on top of it all, but to, to win the actual events is the, is the go. We were trying to catch Possum, but uh, he, he pulled a little bit more time and, and was going quicker than us, so there was nothing we could do. And, and he's wrapped up the championship now and, and good on him. Like he, He's done a great job and, and he's beaten us and we had no answer. We'll have to just come back next year and try harder. Appropriately, the finale of the 1996 Australian Rally Championship took place in the nation's capital. With local rally fans already primed for action by the announcement that the FAI Rally of Canberra was to gain Asia-Pacific Rally Championship status in 1999. Bourne might have wrapped up the Australian title, but in his hometown, Neil Bates was determined to finish the season with a win some of the best rally terrain in the forests around Canberra, all close to the city, and plenty of action for the spectators. Three days, 24 special stages, and 332 competitive kilometres. The 1992 victor in this Canberra rally, but also the new Australian rally champion, Possum Bourne, seated one and heading up from the Canberra centre into one of the toughest rallies in the Australian calendar, He's been three times to the event and now gets into serious rally territory near the Titbin Villa Nature Reserve. Co-driver Craig Vincent, company general manager from Hamilton in New Zealand. This man, Neil Bates and his co-driver Coral Taylor, the championship combination in Australia for the last three years, but deposed now and uh, had a hard chase after Possum Bourne all season. Haven't been able to do it. Ed Odinsky and Mark Stacey in the Mitsubishi Lancer not getting the start they wanted because ultimately they're only sixth fastest on this stage and Joe McAndrew from New Zealand, the reigning champion, enticed over by the Canberra Challenge 
52 year old motorcycle racer Bob Haldane, his co-driver in an ex-pro drive Subaru, the same as this car up at the Brindamellos, and it is of course Possum Horn. And Neil Bates wondering what he can do to chase the Subaru. But Michael Guest has been making very good use of his Group N car. 27 year old who's really matured this year. The 37 year old accountant Steve O'Brien found is his co-driver. And it's an exciting but a very, very competent good time in that car. Then on to Pierce's East, nearly 10 kilometres. Possum Bourne still running at the front of the field, both on the road but leading it as well. Although there's only seconds between him and Bates on each of the first three stages so far. Bates out after him. Beckton in an exciting time with Ido Osawa, his Tokyo co-driver. The architectural draftsman from Wodonga not getting everything right there, but the 23-year-old, a very exciting young talent. Nevertheless, Kings Park on the shores of Lake Burley Griffin's never seen anything like this. A one and three quarter kilometre super special stage, right in the heart of the city virtually, and both bitumen and dirt. And Neil Bates chasing his first fastest time of the day. Alan Laverick is leading the national section of the rally and boy he gets into a lot of trouble and gets very crossed up on a fast section of the bitumen and straight into the camera but miraculously the cameraman fleeing the scene only with a broken leg luckily only with a broken leg and a very dramatic end to the first day a very tight battle at the front of the field after day one. Possumborn winning four of the five special stages, but only holding an eight second advantage. And Michael Guest, where he had been for most of the championship, at the head of Group N. So, on to day two. What better way to start the longest day in the event with the longest special stage of the whole event. on the Wombat special stage, so let's go on board with his co-driver Craig Vincent. Five left hand, five right line, and left and right hand, long three left, 50. Three, four right, flip. Three left, 30. Three, four right opens and three, four left, 40. You can see from the wheel work how slippery it is, how much possible Bourne's using the wheel, and it makes you wonder sometimes, who's braver, the driver or the co-driver? Right line, 50. Long four right, blip. Eight, 13 seconds behind at this stage. He's won two stages, but only a total of four seconds, trying so hard to get back to Possum's time, and in fact, he drops 19 seconds, his worst result so far. And Ed Ordinsky slipping even further behind as well, in fact, drops another 25 seconds on this one. And a wild spin for Paul Gover, who was seventh overnight, fifth by special stage 15, when he had two punctures, but only one spare had to withdraw. A good effort. New Green Hill, possible wall, nearly 15 kilometres. Still 
chasing as he's been doing all through the event and in fact on this one posting his third special stage win the Bay owned totaling five seconds he's taken another second and so he's 31 seconds down for the possum and now to group N to Michael Guest leading Marty Beckton overnight by a minute but then with a disaster on special stage six goes behind him but is pulling back time and now by the end of this stage we'll trail him by just four seconds and Daru nearly meets the possum as on this short sharp stage just under six kilometers he's going very hard very hard to make time on stages as short as this because they're always into giant killing performances. Ross McKenzie running 10th overall. So then, onto the Reedy for the second time. And possible nine seconds faster than he was the first time around. And no wonder when he's going like that. Group N was a great battle with Marty Beckton and Michael Guest. Beckton's now out. So Guest very much in command in Group N. And look at the way he's going. No wonder he's leading. Now the final stage for day two. Hardy's nearly 34 kilometres. Possumborn. In great form. Look at him. Totally confident. Totally in control of the car very quick. And Neil Bates looking a bit subdued, looking as though the car's perhaps not working as well, which in fact turns out to be the case because he has a massive breakage happening right now on this stage underneath the car in the front cross member. Cost him a lot of time, 40 seconds. Corolla Cup has been a great success over its two years for young drivers like Paul Vince, just 21 years old with a lot of talent. And he's had a great battle with such as Simon Evans, last year's champion. Neil Bates knows now he's got a major problem with the Celica, but luckily has been able to get back to his service crew at the overnight stop. Uh, the front cross member's broken in half, so, so it's fairly major work. We're going to uh, take the front cross member out tonight and uh, repair it and try and put it back in. The boys seem confident they can do it, but we'll have to wait and see. It's a fairly major job because we don't have a spare cross member. So uh, they've got to repair what's in there. Apart from that, the day's been fine, uh, but the possum's got away from us a bit, but, but there's been nothing we could do about it, and yeah, we've had a good day. Nearly 200 kilometres and 10 hours of rallying in day two. A very tough one. Possumborn going well. Neil Bates with a major problem in the Celica, and Michael Guest well clear in Group N. Luckily we were able to get the car in last night and uh, we, they took the cross member out and repaired it last night and now they've got to fit it back in. But I can assure you fitting a front cross member to a car in 10 minutes is going to be a struggle. You know, that's the way it goes in rallying and, and uh, we'll just have to try and fix it now and continue on. Uh, realistically now we'll have to go to reduce pace so we'll just uh, cruise around and try and stay in front of it. By day three we've lost 24 competitors and the dust because it's now teeming rain. And on Sugarloaf, 33 kilometres, Possum Ball has a flat tearing away at the right rear of the car. In fact, he ends up driving for 12 kilometres like that to drop quite a lot of time. But should have been Neil Bates here. But Ed Ordinsky coming through means that tearing Bates' car has put him back on the road. He's lost road time. And then Neil Bates coming through and manages to be only three seconds faster than Michael Guest in the Group N car. So everything not right yet in the front end of the Celica. Second time on Blewett, but it's wet this time. And Possum Bourne is 22 seconds slower than he was in the dry. Ed Ordinsky has been soldiering on in difficult conditions. Not the front rear balance that he needs in the car. And he really reckons he's done very well to be in third place overall. Michael Guest 
group in suits him well in these wet conditions. Not so much power to play with, or to have to moderate. His teammate Mark Pape in the 12th, at the end of day one now, up in the fifth place. Second in group N. Neil Bates fifth on the road, but still second overall. But a broken drive shaft really bringing out the calibre of the drive to remain in second place. The last of the forestry stages, second time on New Green Hills, nearly 15 kilometres, and Neil Bates has had a puncture to add to his bows. It really has taken great skill and perseverance by him and the crew to get to the finish and indeed in second place. The only one they couldn't beat was the new Australian Rally Champion, Kiwi Possible. And all we got to do now is get around this last corner, and here's the thing. Fantastic feeling. It's been a long, hard year that started in March with our eight events and some of the most serious competition I've had to cope with for a long time. And I think he means it because Neil Bates and Ed Ordinsky have made his life very difficult this year. He's had both to develop the Subaru and to drive it very hard. And finally, the last stage sees John Waterhouse, winner of the non-international section of this rally, over the final three quarters of a kilometre on the other side. And then with the rain streaming down yet again on a difficult final day, Michael Guest wins the Group N section of the rally and of course the national championship. And again with final flair and then Possumborn down the bitumen section of this stage. And then onto the dirt in front of a good party crowd despite the cold rain falling. Possumborn, not only a worthy national champion but a worthy winner of the FAI International Rally of Canberra. A great event. Another good win for Possum Bourne. Partly because he was the quickest, but partly because he didn't have anything like the problems that afflicted Neil Bates and Ed Odinsky. No, it was very, very satisfying. We had a, lot, a few problems, but we managed to get over the top of it. It gives the others something to think about over, this, over the summer, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> A really good season, a good learning year for me and, and uh, I think my driving style developed quite well as well as my maturity in driving and uh, that, that's shown, shown here. We had a, a lot of problems but managed to overcome all of them and, and still win Group N and we've won the Tasman Cup now too which is a fantastic result. So a wonderful 1996 Australian Rally Championship. For Neil Bates, Coral Taylor and Toyota, a record breaking fourth championship was not to be. But for Possum Bourne and Subaru, it was a fitting result for a superior car. Brilliant and consistent driving. The realisation of a goal that Bourne had set himself since 1993. The Australian Rally Championship Drivers' Title. <laughs>